Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution. We're going to discuss further into the substitution rule and now look at uh, the case where we deal with definite integrals. So basically, over the substitution rule for definite integrals. And uh, basically, to recap quickly on the uh, on my earlier video, which I went over the substitution rule for basic in general or in for indefinite integrals. Uh, basically, to recap on that, just if you have u equals g of x, and this is a differentiable function, meaning the derivative exists. And whose range and interval i and f is continuous on i. This just means that if you plug this inside here, that the, the, that the function f exists uh, and it's continuous on whatever this, these values are of u. And basically, then if you have a function like this, where you have integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx, then you could replace u equals g of x inside here, and the differential du. Is, equal, is gonna equal to g prime of x dx, so this part replaces with du, so you have something like this. Yeah, but when we deal with definite integrals, meaning integral from a number to another number, then basically the substitution rule is very similar, so we'll have the same definition, uh, basically if u equals g of x, et cetera, all the way up to here, and uh, but then you have this case where g prime is, or the derivative of g of x is continuous on the interval a and b. So from here to here, the derivative exists. Yeah, then basically if we have an integral from a to b of f of g of x times uh, g prime of x dx, then this one, we could basically, it's equivalent as solving this function, which is integral of g of a of f of u uh, du up to g of b right here. Yeah, and this is simply because we're dealing with u now, this u du, so we basically replace these x's now with from, from a u to a u, and that's just putting in uh, x equals a inside here and x equals b inside here. Yeah, now to uh, basically prove this theorem, even though it, it seems pretty obvious, but the proof is uh, just pretty straightforward. Basically, if we have let f, uh, capital F, be an antiderivative of f, this just means that the derivative of f or f prime is going to equal to f, so if you have the case of f of yeah, f of g of x, so you have a function inside here, then the derivative, if we were to look at the derivative of it, we'll get basically f prime of g of x equals two. Yeah, actually, I'll just write it like this, uh, just to make it a bit more clear. So d d of d over dx of f of g of x. This equals to basically f prime g of x. And then uh, basically using chain rule, we have to go g prime of x right here. Yeah, and basically because uh, this f prime is equal to f, so this equals to basically f of g of x uh, times by g prime of x. So now if we were taking the integral from a to b, and this, this function is exactly this one right here, so we'll get basically integral a to b yeah, of f of g of x times g prime of x dx, so now this equals to, because the number of integrals uh, is just gonna be the antiderivative. So the antiderivative, we know that it's gonna be this f of g of x, or, or this capital F. So this equals to f of g of x, and then obviously it's gonna be from a to b right here. Yeah, and this notation basically means from f of g of uh, b right here, minus f of g of a. Yeah, so and this is the same thing as, as this part right here. But then, but now when we look at uh, the right side of the initial part, so basically we're, we were considering the left side. Now if we look at this right side separately, and it's pretty uh, straightforward, yeah, we will get basically integral of now g of a of uh, g of b. So we're doing this completely separately, and to show that's going to be equal to the same thing, this is going to be now yeah, f of u du. So just using the fundamental theorem of calculus, I think it's part two with definite integrals, this is just gonna be equal to now, um, this is just f of u, so then the antiderivative is gonna be f, capital F of u, based on what we initially did, we just let uh, capital F be an antiderivative of f. So now we're doing dealing f of u, and this is not this, yes, yeah, basically, it's gonna be a different variable, but same, same idea. So now we go from f of u from now g of a, to g of b right here. So now, and then this also uh, equals to basically f of g of b uh, minus f of g of a, and this is the exact same thing as this part right here. 
So then the theorem holds basically the integral of uh, from a to b of this function is equal to the integral of g of a to g of b. So now we could use just a u instead of having to convert it back and I'll show you that with an example. Yeah, and the example I want to go over to il help illustrate this better is when we look at from my earlier video on substitution rule for uh, examples part one, I showed basically I solved this integral or this indefinite integral of um, square root 2x plus 1 dx and showed that it equals to 1 over 3 bracket uh, 2x plus 1 all to the power of 3 over 2 plus a constant c. But if we kept uh, the substitution rule of, of the, the substitution of u equals 2x plus 1, we got up to this point right here. So uh, the idea is now instead of going to back here, we could just use this function if we had a definite integral. Let's say we were going from 0 to 4. Yeah, so if, if we're going from 0 to 4 of square root 2x plus 1, if we use this result right here using the x, we'll get basically 1 over 3 and then times it by 2x plus 1, and then 3 over 2, and obviously the constant will disappear when we have a definite integral. So now it's from 0 to 4. So we try this way without using the substitution one. We'll, we'll just show you. You could plug this in. So it's going to be equal to 1 over 3 times it by 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9 and then to the power of 3 over 2, minus, and now this is going to be, well, 0, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1, that's just 1, and 1 to the power of 3 over 2 is just 1 still. So we have this part right here, so if we solve this one, 9 to the power of 3 over 2, this is the same thing as doing 9 squared, and then to the power of 3. So 9 squared is 3, 3 to the power of 3 is 27. So this will equal to basically 27 minus 1, all divided by 3, equals to 26 over 3. So we could do it this way or we could use this result and then just use the u. So we can go basically integral from uh, basically now uh, this part right here. With, this was u. Yeah, u equals to 2x plus 1. So we can go from uh, well 2x, 2x plus 1 where uh, x is initially 0 or we could just write uh, u. Yeah, so we'll go u of 0 this equals to basically 2, 0, plus 1. This equals to 1. And then uh, then from integral from that, from 1 to is u of uh, 4. And this equals to basically 2x plus 1. But now there's a 4, so 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1. That's 9. So this equals to, equals to 9 right here. And now this part is going to be 1 over 2. I'll see this back. Actually, 1 over 3. Yeah, 1 over 3, u to the power of 3 over 2. I showed some made a mistake. It's 1 over 2 square root uh, u right here. This, the, yeah, I mean, if we replaced that, uh, I, was, I was thinking about this final answer. So then this is going to be equal to now u is going to be 1 over 3, power of 3 over 2 from, uh, well, 9, this is 1 to 9. So basically we're using this u instead of the x now. So we just straight plug this in. So 9, 3 over 2. Uh, over 3 again minus, well, 1 over 3. Same thing as this one right here. 9 square root is going to be 3. 3 to the power of 3 is 27. So we get 27 minus 1 over 3 equals 26 minus, I mean 26 over 3. So this is our answer. The exact same thing in this one. I'll go over some examples in later videos to show that, well, when you're dealing with complex ones, it's, it's not even worthwhile to write this one at all. It's just going straight with this U uh, formation right here. It's much easier. Yeah, and here, uh, to get an idea of why these are equal, why is 26 and divided by 3 basically the same answer for when you're using from 0 to 4 or basically from uh, 1 to 9 of this U variable? Well, when we graph these out, so this one right here, consider the blue as square root 2x plus 1. And now this u is the transformation once you did the substitution, just to replace x with a u. You just can't graph it in Google Graphing Calculator without it. Now let's put a u over there. So basically this is uh, the red, and this one can be considered as uh, 1 over 2 square root of u. That's when we apply the substitution of the integral. Remember, integral is the area under the curve. So if initially we go from 0, the blue one, uh, to 4. So the 0 to 4 is up to here. Yeah, so it's somewhere like that. So it basically it's saying that this area is equivalent to once we change the variable to with u from now 
one. Yeah, from one, I'll change the color to green. So from now, one all the way to nine. So basically, now we're saying from this variable, when we change it, these are the equivalent areas right here. Yeah, and we could write basically a one is equal to a two, which is this one right here. So that's basically the idea of, of switching the variable. So anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this video. And like always, you could download these exact notes in the link below in the description, as well as watching my earlier video on this example to go over this, uh, how to solve this integral. I'll go over some more examples in later videos. So stay tuned and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.